Poutine's Wild Review and Thoughts in honor of Women's History Month. I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I really loved. This video, there's probably going to be some jokes, none of the expensive members of minorities, and we'll get into some serious topics. And let's see. Right, if you're looking for a review that's like the movie doesn't really hold up, it's been outdone by little movies because of that it's not that much fun to watch today, and or it's different from the original, so it sucks. Whether you agree with those assessments or not, this is not that review. And yeah, I, I would have liked to to read or listen through the the book, but unfortunately, by you know, I was a little too slow to to get to it, and by the time I did, you know, each copy was already in the hands of someone else. I realize this video is long, I'm doing a can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything. It's, if I at some point in the review decide I want to spoil something, I'm going to verbally let you know and hold up an index finger so you can mute and skip that and you see me lower my index finger. As soon as the review itself ends, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. And yeah, so the movie is rated R for sexual content, nudity, drug use, and language. And let's see, the IMDb Parents Guide note, you know, sex and nudity is moderate, so it was violence and gore, profanity, alcohol, drugs, and smoking and frightening and intense scenes and let's see the, um, yeah I, th I think it uses the the R rating well it would have been very awkward if they tried to fit it as a PG-13 and it's not one of those movies that feels like oh it just wants to be edgy so it throws in some swearing and, and such right and th this video will also I might swear in this video as well so, yeah, um, the plot, I'm just going to quote IMDb here, a chronicle of one woman's 1,100-mile solo hike undertaken as a way to recover from a recent personal tragedy. You know, yeah, she, she realized I would walk 500 miles, and I would walk 500 more, and then 100 more. And... I am not really familiar with the other work of director Jean-Marc Vallée, R.I.P. I, based on this, I would like to. And I don't really know. So Nick Hornby wrote the, the script. He, he wrote the book High Fidelity. I thought the, the, two, the movie from the year 2000 was pretty good. You know, I'm seeing interesting stuff on their, you know, yeah, uh, filmographies, but not really anything else I'm familiar with. Yeah, you know, in in the 90s and early 2000s, I watched a, a bunch of her stuff. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Fear, Cruel Intentions, Election, American Psycho. That's right, she is in Little Nicky. Legally Blonde, love her there. Yeah, I think other than this, the most recent thing I've seen her in is Walk the Line, where she was also really great. Yeah, just, you know, she's... There's a, there's a charm to her, but she's also capable of intensity. And... Yeah, I, I thought she did quite well here. And, yeah, this probably is the best performance I've, I've seen by her. So, back to various critics have said, you know, the movie is very much Oscar bait, and that is, yeah, absolutely. It's a very honest performance, very brave. And, yeah, the exploration of the relationship between a mother and her daughter is, is quite strong. And, and yeah, something I, I quite, personally, I quite appreciated was early on, it kind of seems like she only remembers situations where like her mother basically said and did things that were you know at the time she thought you know her mom was being annoying 
but you know when when she was thinking back it was like oh you know she it's like she never did anything wrong and then as you get a little further in she starts to remember it's not necessarily that her mom herself did a lot of bad things but there were times where her mom was very brutally honest about acknowledging the bad things and yeah the the um, I, I quite appreciate it, the, the fact. I, I don't think this movie would have worked as well if it was as brutally honest about that stuff from right away. It's, you know, yeah, I know from personal experience that's the kind of thing you build towards when you're grieving. And let's see, yeah, uh, some user reviews said they didn't really empathize with the character. They thought the movie was depressing, which, I mean, it's not... It's not not depressing. It's not really supposed to be. There's there's some uplifting material, but a lot of the movie is not super happy. That's on purpose, not by accident. It's frustrating that people don't like. If that's not what you're into, fine. But just you know, like I've watched happy movies when I was sad, and vice versa. I try to not give a negative review just because that wasn't the mood I was in. Like. I don't know what gave you the idea that it would be, that it would not at all be depressing. And yeah, some some people can't see humanity in a woman who says and does fuck. And there was this fascinating user review. Let's see, this was um, a meta user review. Subject matter sorted with bent toward druggy culture, which this dirtbag amateur filmmaker. At least this guy, yeah, this person posted this before the director had died. Tends to know most about. You have to either be a complete feminist, and then they censored something, so I don't, I don't know. Asshole, I'm gonna go with asshole. To like the non merits. Of this piece of shit. I mean, I I do appreciate that that they admit that. Yeah, I mean, I can appreciate. I think if you're if you're not a feminist, certainly if you are an anti-feminist, yeah, you're probably not gonna like this movie that much. I just I don't think that's the own this person thinks it is. Let's see and. Um, one person didn't feel like the the movie did quite go far enough in, you know, the, the, let's see, they wrote, her enormous backpack looks really heavy, it seemed like the difficulty stopped there. And, let's see, yeah, the, the rest of the time, her hardships of the hike were obviously just acting, never felt real to me. And I do think... You know, as as mentioned, big fan of Reese Witherspoon. They there probably was a little bit of toning down so that she would be able to do as much of the movie as possible. And yeah, in real life, you know, she is not a hiker, and this is one of those things where you, you know, it might have been difficult to because because hiking and acting take a lot of effort to master. These are not easy things, so. Yeah, you kind of have to either choose a professional hiker or a professional actor. I I think they made the right choice, but I can appreciate that for some it did not really work. And let's see, what was this other? Oh, right, the um, yeah. See, I'm not 100% sure how to link to the. N normally, I would link to this, but I don't know how to do that with Metacritic. So, just gonna read this aloud. So, this is a Meta Metacritic user review. Um, the user is Mancunian2014. They gave a 7 out of 10. 
I'm a little su bit surprised that no one has mentioned that Wild is very much a movie about challenges unique to women that male privilege otherwise excuses. Continual vigilance at being propositioned for sex, disbelief or concern praise that a woman gets for doing something men typically do, experiencing sexist assumptions made about lone female versus lone male, favors done so that a woman will come around. Despite the physical isolation and potential dangers in nature, Cheryl must face these rallies and Wild makes an admirable attempt to, uh, to highlight a female-centered experience amidst all the other problems she Cheryl's life. True, the whole feat of completing the trail as heroically as Cheryl had in spite of her initial experience is not entirely realistic. I also didn't see what the original quirks Reese Witherspoon brought to the role. However, I am convinced that the intention of Wild was to display the greater yeah, greater messages behind Cheryl's Thousand Mile Saga, accepting one's bad choices and accomplishing a feat without male privilege. Wild succeeds and makes an unforgettable statement. Absolutely true. And let's see, that brings us to, yeah, so, uh, right, before I get into that, I, I wanted to briefly say I quite appreciated the way the movie, there's a lot of intercutting, uh, you know, we, a lot of the time is spent on the hike, and every so often it will cut back, something will remind Cheryl of something, and that's how we see, you know, when, when the movie starts, she's already going on the hike, you know, and it does, it jumps slightly back, if, you know, we, we see um, one of the, like, is it the first day? We see an early day at the very start of the movie, then it jumps back to before she starts the hike, and then, you know, a good chunk of the movie is the hike, so the way that we learn why she's going on this hike, and all the things that you know, has has happened, the the bad choices she's made, which the movie is honest about. So I don't know why some people are acting like, oh, you know, why are they trying to make us like this woman who's made bad choices? The movie's very honest about the, the bad choices. You know, this this isn't trying to to make her out to be some saint. But but yeah, the you know, every so often something she hears or sees will remind her of something and we get a brief glimpse and that's also where some people take issue with the fact that Reese Witherspoon plays the daughter of Laura Dern, even though there's not that much age difference. And I do think that it takes a little bit of getting used to, but I think it's worth making the effort. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, like, if they, if they recast Cheryl for those scenes... You know, I appreciate that some people think it was to give Reese Witherspoon a better chance of winning, winning an Oscar, give her more scenes and more dramatic scenes, because some of the scenes between mother and daughter are quite dramatic. But I do think that it was so that we are never disconnected, which does sometimes happen. And it also, you know, if Laura Dern had to run around with old age makeup for a lot of her screen time, there, there are a couple of clips where, you know, brief flashbacks where it's her and, and you know, her, her two kids, Cheryl and Leaf, are, you know, little. You know, yeah, there's, there's a number of movies where because they insisted on casting someone else, for the flashbacks where they were younger or and or someone was covered in old age makeup it completely takes you out of it and yeah i i personally i would say within about half an hour i was used to the fact that no this is you know yeah you know reese witherspoon is playing you know she's she's in school while her mother yeah, she she looks she doesn't look quite as young as the scenes would have us you know believe but yeah. So, couple of IMDb user reviews. Uh one person gave it a 2 out of 10 and the the one line summary is a hiker with a bad attitude. There is nothing likable about Reese Witherspoon's character. She can constantly complaining and has a permanent scowl on her face. Her attitude towards life is negative and selfish. You're not supposed to like her. You're supposed to try to understand how she ended up like that and hope that it's not too late to become a better person. You know, this is one of those things where if the 
if the character was male, conservatives would be praising the the character for ah, oh, you know, it's such a it's it's you know so so complex of a character, but because she's a woman, it's this you know. Women don't have to. Women don't exist for men. They don't have to constantly go out of their way to make us feel better. And let's see. Yeah, the the. Okay, so the reviewer goes on to say. From the first scene where she carelessly knocks her boot off the edge of the cliff and throws the other one, I shook my head. She goes through that whole walk without finding any meaning, just feeling sorry for herself and not thinking carefully about what she's doing. So I'm going to have to assume that this person just didn't finish the movie because it's made abundantly clear that she finds meaning. But, you know, conservatives can't stop lying when there's a piece of media or individual or something they don't like. And, you know, she's she's in pain. She's behaving in a self-destructive manner. This happens in real life, and we should try to help people like that. And, let's see. Yeah, they go on to say, because she has no idea about hiking or camping, she ends up asking men for help, and then thinking that they all want to sleep with her, which they don't. But that's her bad attitude for her. The implication that many of these men are looking for sexual favors is quite strong, but I guess not sufficiently so for this reviewer who seems dead head, dead set on hating Strayed. Just, yeah, the misogyny is quite intense here. And then the, yeah, then he says, I, I'm guessing this is a guy. I'd have to say my favorite, could be a woman, internalist misogyny is a thing. I'd have to say my favorite part of the film was when the older man empties her pack for her. She brought random things without thinking through what she really needed. All the while, I just want to slap that scowl off her face. This guy's literally so confident in his misogyny and toxic masculinity that he's happy to announce to the world that the look on a woman's face made him want to physically assault her. 48 out of 101 people found that review helpful. I'd also just like to point out, based on what he wrote here, it, what this reviewer wrote here, it really sounds like that scene has her, like, upset. She's actually clearly grateful and is thanking him. Like, for some of his advice, she's like, are you sure about that? But she's not being an asshole to him. Like, I read that review before watching the movie, and I was thinking, well, you know, maybe... I, I was gonna try to figure out... Because it's, it sounds like, you know, okay, in that situation, you know, maybe try not to, you know, try, try to be nice. The, this person is evidently trying to help, but no, she's, and, and I was, she doesn't have a scowl on her face. During, like, just, yeah. And let's see. The... Um, hmm, oh, there we go, yes. Um, yeah, one, one person wrote, a, this, this person gave it a 1 out of 10, and wrote, A story of a broken, westernized woman. Stories like this make me glad to have moved away from westernized countries to the east. The story is about a broken, westernized woman, like most today, drug and drinking problem, sleeps around, etc. She tries to find herself in the wild. I believe this has received good reviews, because women today in the west can relate, while in normal countries, you end up rolling your eyes throughout this whole movie. No wonder I hear one out of ten of women in the West suffer from depression today. I feel sorry to them all. Sigh. 26 out of 62 found it helpful. And yeah, like, it's it's fascinating to me that this person doesn't even consider if maybe the depression comes from something else. And this is more of like a symptom, because, you know, to be clear, some of what she engages in, like, she has a drug problem, and the movie, again, is is honest about that, and in fact, we do see, you know, it's, it goes by kind of fast, but we do see how, you know, at first, she was like, I don't have a problem, you know, she, because that is sadly how a lot of, pe a lot of addiction does start like that, you know, you, I'm not speaking from personal experience, but from from listening to people who struggle with addiction, 
at first they say I'm not one of those people I'm I can control it and later they find it spiraling out of control so I worry that I know exactly what this guy means when he uses the term westernized so I'm almost relieved that he doesn't get into detail to be clear I don't think that the West is better than the rest of the world I also don't think it's inherently worse and certainly Western women are not worse than the women of the rest of the world it is slightly funny that he uses the term normal about everywhere other than the West even though he already admitted that he used to live in the West so that used to be his normal but my main issue with this review is he doesn't actually suggest any solution for this problem that apparently bothers him so much that he had to move countries to get away from it. I mean, what is he suggesting? That everyone should move away from the West? That's literally not feasible. I mean, what do we do? Trade places with the rest of the world? I guess he's just gloating? I'm sure the vast majority of Western women are extremely relieved that he GTFO'd. I do feel bad for the women in the rest of the world and in the East. I suppose it's not impossible that at some point this guy will stop blaming women for his problems and maybe try to work on improving himself, but then if this movie doesn't inspire him to do that, given that that literally is what it's about, I'm not sure anything will. And to anyone who says that I shouldn't be saying he's blaming women for his problems, the fact that he literally left behind an entire chunk of the world because of how he feels about 50% of the population of it is how I reached that conclusion. The idea that there is literally not a single, or married for that matter, woman in the West that lives up to his standard tells me they're out of whack. And... Let's see. The, so the movie is... Uh, there we, yes, there we go. Um, the movie's an hour and 50 and a half minutes without end credits and 56 and a half minutes with and I will definitely say that near the very end, I was thinking it's okay if this movie ends soon, but then, you know, it ended like two minutes after I felt myself thinking that. So, yeah, job well done, you know. And, yeah, I was never bored. I really appreciated the exploration of the various themes. And for those who need this to be the case, no, there are positive male characters in this movie. And, you know, it, it doesn't excuse negative behavior by, you know, there, yeah, Cheryl, you know, makes some mistakes. It doesn't make it out as though that's automatically okay because she's a woman. And, yeah, um... The best element for me was this honest and credible exploration of grief, helping to push back against simplifying narratives. That was actually the, the reason that I did this movie. You know, it was primarily for the, the exploration of, of grief. And it was, in, yeah, I chose, it, I chose this movie specifically because of the excellent video by The Take uh, let's see, uh, how five stages misrepresented grief on screen. I'll be linking it in the description box as well. And, let's see, yeah. Um, so the thing that, some something I saw various others criticize about this, they, they said it was too Hollywood based on true story, which, yeah, it is very much. And th there are a number of, things in this where you can tell, okay, they really, they, someone really wanted an Oscar here, and, you know, it's, it's often better when, a, a, movies often end up better when they don't go so hard for an Oscar, you know, that is one of the problems with, you know, and, and capitalists hate when you say this, but, yeah, if, if you focus everything on competitions, everything, if everything is competition, then you end up focusing on winning a competition when, you know, in, in this case you should be trying to focus on make making the best piece of creative expression. I don't know if art is quite the right term that, that you could and, you know, in a number of industries you should try to focus on doing something that helps the highest amount of people instead of, you know, makes the most profit. And let's 
yeah, the thing I was most worried about that was that it would be unwilling to engage with grief, and I really appreciate that it did. The, the movie is essentially bathing in grief, which, again, is why some people found it depressing, and, again, like, I don't, I don't know why you watched a movie about grief if you weren't expecting any part of it to be depressing. And, let's see, the... Um, uh, yeah, and the thing I was most looking forward to was the emotional honesty, and yeah, it absolutely delivered. The trailer definitely does give too much away. Um, I will say that if you like the trailer, you're more likely to like the movie. If you have already watched the trailer, just try not to think too much about the 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 stuff you you see in here in it because there's definitely yeah. Gives away too much. And let's see. Right, so of the top 100 user reviews on IMDb, 9 gave it a 1 out of 10, 8 gave it a 2, another 9 gave it a 3, 1 gave it a 4, 10 gave it a 5, 4 gave it a 6, 14 gave it 7, 20 gave it 8, 14 gave it 9, and 9 gave it 10. So, yeah, there's a number of people who who really can't stand it, you know, slightly more that really loved it, but that is still, yeah. So this is not a very special effects heavy movie. Um, some of what there is is just slightly unconvincing CG, which it's it's too bad. I, I get why, like, some of it is, like, involving an animal that I hear is notoriously difficult for wranglers to wrangle, so I don't blame them for for not, you know, if, yeah. Especially considering that this is also stuff that's actually, you know, it was shot on location. It was filmed in the wild. And and having to, to take care of the animal out there and get the wranglers on location and all this stuff, you know, it's... I, I really don't blame them for just going with, with CG, but it is slightly in the uncanny valley, and it just, it slightly detracts, I'm, I'm afraid. And, yeah, I read this 7 Compelling Explorations of Grieving out of 10. And, let's see, the, um, yes, that brings us to the spoiler section starting with, or, yeah, the spoiler section, notes taken while watching, and has, oh, it's lagging, hopefully not too much, yeah, there's not really, sadly not a lot I can do about it right now, so I'm just gonna quickly open up here we go yeah so yeah the the start really does set up this is going to be a very difficult you know she lo loses a, a toenail and yeah the 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 theme that people expect her to to engage in in sex is set up very early when she goes in you know, she she gets a room and she's told it's extra if there's someone joining you. And she keeps saying there's not. And the other woman is like, no, there, there will be. And yeah, the, the montage of her dealing with the, the mass, the, the monster. Let's go with that. That honestly is quite the, yeah, the, the, her backpack, her massive backpack. You know, dealing with it and, and struggling with getting everything right on it and just, yeah. And let's see. Yeah, I, I like the element of her leaving these little, you know, she writes something every time she gets to one of these things where you write something, you know, trying to keep her, her spirits high. And... Yeah, this thing of, you know, even when, you know, Bobby is is studying, but she's still, like, cooking for 
for Leaf and and his friend and and all this stuff, you know. And and Cheryl's trying to say, you don't have to do all of these things. That you know. And let's see. Yeah, like the 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 guy who you know says you can come to my place for a for a hot shower and hot meal you know does end up you know not being dangerous but yeah like it wouldn't have been that difficult for him to just say you know my wife is going to love meeting you you know it it takes him way too long to to bring up the fact that he has a wife and you know he does have a gun in the car so you can understand her fear about it and let's see. yeah I thought the the tattoo scene really showed that you know she is really looking to, to you know she does clearly feel bad or she wouldn't be unloading all this stuff on this tattoo artist you know and it, it kind of looks like at that point it's maybe more, you know, her husband, who I swear is played by Nando V Movies. I don't know, maybe maybe she thought he nitpicks too much. Not me, though. But the, yeah, um, you know, he's maybe not looking to, or, or maybe it's just because there's a, there's, the tattoo artist is right there. Maybe that's why he's not talking so much about it. Let's see. And then we have the. Um, right. Um, when when her friend, you know, we should all have a friend like that. You know, she straight up says, you know, we're gonna we're gonna deal with this this pregnancy, and it does end up with her getting an abortion, which I think might also be one of the things that some of these more conservative user reviews where that's coming from they they can't handle that and and again to be clear i don't think it's like in, in it's one of those situations where you should be using protection you know the but but you know and and i appreciate some some i'm not going to say that i think it would be a bad idea to give the kid up for adoption but ultimately, I really don't want to be telling a woman what to do with her body. Let's see. And I do appreciate, you know, this is one of the... Yeah, I get, actually, that is the thing that straight up makes her hike the, the PCT, I think. If I understood correctly from... Let's see. And... Yeah, and the the guy who thinks, oh, she's you know she's uh, she's this homeless person, and you know unsol ah unsolicited un yeah uh, without getting her clear consent, he takes her picture, and he assumes she doesn't know what the what was it called Harper's is. Let's see and. I think that might be about what I have for the um uh, let's see that might be about what I have to say yeah uh, incredibly creepy when that one guy is like watching her change clothes. Um, I'm linking a really great review in the in the description box that th this person says everything that I had to say about this so I encourage you to read that. Let's see. Yeah and and you know to those who say oh you know Cheryl's just selfish throughout well she convinced the you know once she gets her package the, you know, she could easily have said, well, you know, the guy's closing up. So, But no, she talks him into, you know, letting the others get their packages as well. 
and yeah, she meets the the little boy. I appreciate that the movie doesn't. I was slightly concerned that it was go off, gonna go off on a thing about, you know, like hopefully he is having his problems cared for. You know, I, I don't think that if they went into exactly what those problems were, that that would necessarily have helped the overall narrative. You know, the, the and I appreciate that this is kind of turning a character into, you know, just fodder for the protagonist's growth, which somehow people seem to have a much bigger problem with when the protagonist is a woman rather than a man, but... You know, the, the fact that she's able to, to say to this kid, you know, problems don't stay problems forever. And the, the singing and the, the flashbacks, the triggers. Right, also very, very sad when the, you know, the only thing they can do to, you know, with, with the horse is, is just shoot it, you know, to, to yeah. I, I, you know, and, and the way she keeps, you know, it's it's basically she's repressed the memory for a while, and when it comes back, she actually vomits, you know. Uh, I don't know if the ending, you know, it's, it is one of those things where perhaps it is a little bit, you know, the, the fact that she ends up saying, you know, I... I don't regret it because it made me who I am. You know, I I can appreciate that that is perhaps slightly easy, and that's again where you know this this Oscar Beatty thing of and and American cinema thing of let's have an easy resolution. Yeah, I I I'm not gonna pretend like I know exactly how one would have ended it in a way that didn't at all have that kind of yeah and that is it for this one so let me know in the comments what is your favorite movie where someone you know goes away from their regular life you know maybe to you know find out who they are or, or something if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two, or more links to stuff like relevant playlists. I suggest the video if you watch on the screen right about now. And let's see. the Yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I will catch you next time.